Well, praise the Lord. Uh, I just want, it's something that has been on my mind. And uh, it was that, like, shifting the atmosphere. We, we have the, prop, uh, the power to shift our own atmosphere. I have these children in the house. We have the power to uh, shift our own atmosphere. Uh, and I'm reminded of something that I had wrote and it describes how can you change the atmosphere by speaking words of life in a book of Acts and uh, when you have time you can go back and read it uh, in the book of Acts we learn how the city of Samaria hey how you doing the city of Samaria, once bound in deception to sorcery, heard the good news about Jesus. And the atmosphere of the entire city became one of great joy. That's in Acts chapter 8. Uh, when you get time, you can go there and read it in Acts chapter 8, verse uh, 8. How a whole city was changed. The whole city was changed when it heard the good news about Jesus Christ. How can your atmosphere be changed around you when you tell somebody about the good news of Jesus Christ? As followers of Jesus, we do not have to put up with or be affected by a negative atmosphere. Instead, we can partner with God to influence and transform the atmosphere. I'm going to say that one more time. As followers of Jesus, we do not have to put up with or be affected by a negative atmosphere. Instead, we can partner with God to influence and transform a whole atmosphere. You know how, uh, you ever wonder how you can be in your own zone and here comes somebody with some negative words? They're trying to pull you into all of their mess. But I learned just to walk away from them in the midst of why they're talking. People, you can be having a good day and there goes somebody that's coming here. Girl, you heard about such and such? They're trying to empty out all that garbage on you. That's right. Amen. Walk away. In, uh, <coughs> in Genesis 1, we read of how the earth's atmosphere was dark and empty. Oh, uh, No problem. When God spoke and let there be word, the atmosphere was transformed, light came, and life came. Light came, and life came. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the, uh, the, the lady. She said to lift up her kids. So right now, Father God, I don't know what the situation is, Lord God, but only you know. So I just plead the blood of Jesus over that situation whatsoever it is, Lord God. And I speak, uh, Father God, that you just strengthen them in their weak areas. Build them up in areas where they are so much torn down in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, not only her kids, but I pray that you just cover each and every last one of our kids. Because if the adversary can't get to us, he will get to those who are close to us. So, Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I lift them all up in Jesus' name. Amen. When we speak in agreement with what the, uh, God is speaking, creative power is released for the fulfillment of his plans. For no word from God will ever fail. That's in Luke chapter 1 verse 37. So, <clears throat> I have five points. Five ways to speak prophetic words of life. The tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Proverbs 18, 21. Five ways to speak prophetic words of life. The Bible tells us that life-giving power is released when God's people speak words of life. So here are five uh, uh, ways that I came up that you can speak. Prophetic, life-giving words that will transform the atmosphere around you. Number one. Focus on and talk about what God is doing and what God intends to do in your life. Don't focus on the negative. Focus on what God is doing in your life. 
Oh man, I've just been blessed with a job. I just got a new house. Uh, my children, uh, you know, everybody's doing well. Everybody's doing wonderful. You have the power to prophesy over your own life. Jesus said the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. John chapter 10, verse 10. Listen to me clearly, people of God. When we are going through a trial, it is easy to focus on the difficulty and the pain. In these situations, debt has to do with loss and the passing of something. Life means something fresh and new is here and on its way. It takes a special kind of focus to see what the Holy Spirit is up to. Yes, we can be honest concerning the facts of what is taking place. However, we can choose a kingdom perspective. Uh, let's gossip the goodness and purposes of God. And when we do, the atmosphere will shift. Let's talk about what God is. Let's talk about what God is doing. Talk about what God is doing. Don't talk about what's not transpiring in your life. Talk about the good. Because what the old song is, I won't complain. All of my good days outweigh my bad days. Number two, speak blessings into your life. Speak the blessings in your life. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. There is. There is a life-giving impact when we speak, pray, or declare words of blessing over people, situations, and ourselves. Yeah, the power of the prophesy. Speak blessings. Even on your children. Lay your hands on your children. Say, oh, you're going to uh, Fortune 500 company owner. You know, straight A student. You, you know, uh, this wonderful, wonderful. Speak life. Don't speak nothing negative. Speak something positive in the lives of those around you. A blessing does not have to be formal. It can be spoken in a natural way. May you receive God's healing in your body. May you experience growth and increase in your business. We can offer to pray a blessing over a person or a situation. We can also incorporate blessing as a tradition. For example, in our family, words of blessing will change the atmosphere. You know, in a family life, words of blessing, you have to speak it. Speak the blessings into, uh, in, into your household. Number three, pray with praise and thanksgiving. We can praise God for who he is, not for just what he can do for us. Prophetic praise and prayer celebrates God's outcome. Hey, how you doing? Before it even manifests physically. And those declarations of praise and thanks shift the atmosphere and contain a power for breakthrough. Miraculous power is released when we pray according to God's purposes in Jesus' name. I feel like I'm getting a little hoarse. That's probably, uh, I was praying this morning, every Saturday morning I get up early and I go in, I go in the walk and I'm losing my voice. Every Saturday it happens. Number four, use prophetic scripture declaration. And when he was talking about prophetic uh, praise, you you sing it. You can know they have some old songs, some uh, some some uh, some hymns that you can sing prophetically, prophetic worship. You know you already uh, just thanking God as the angels was in heaven. Crying out in uh, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 through 4, as the angels were in heaven crying out, Holy, holy, holy. They were up there singing a prophetic praise. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And as they sung praises, the doors of the temple, I mean, the posts of the temple move. What are those posts? I talked about that this morning. Posts are symbolic of mountains. And mountains are symbolic of the situations and circumstances that the adversary will implant in your life. So, number four, use prophetic scripture declaration. Pray and ask God for specific scriptures that will reflect what his heart and purpose is and what he is doing. 
Prophetic means that we have insight from the Holy Spirit and God's word as to God's intended outcome for a situation or for people. There is tremendous authority when we declare God's word. Uh, what's that, uh, that song? I'm healed in Jesus' name. No more sickness, no more pain. And then they say, by his stripes, we are healed. I'm a little horse. I can't even sing it. I like that song. By his stripes, we are healed. We all proclaim, I'm healed in Jesus' name. Yeah, that's a song right there. It's a prophetic worship. It's, uh, it's prophetic scripture. Take every opportunity to share. This is number five, my last point. Take every opportunity to share the gospel. The good news about what Jesus accomplished on the cross and how people can receive forgiveness and life through him changes lives and shift the atmosphere. Oh, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You taking every opportunity to share the gospel. How do you how can you share the gospel? You share the gospel by your lifestyle. What you have been through, your testimony. Man, God brought me out of that. I was delivered. I was healed. You know, I've been set free. You know, all of that. That's that you have to take every opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because guess what? People are tired of listening to a watered down gospel. We are living in time where the gospel is being watered down from pulpits around the world. We're living in a time where people are so hurt that they want to get out of the world, but it don't make no sense to come from out of the world to go to a church that's no different than the world that they're trying to come out of. So you have the power to shift your atmosphere. You have the power to speak prophetically into your life. You have the power to do it. The question, the only question is, will you let him and will you do it? It's already there. All you have to do is do it. And that's it. You have the power to shift the atmosphere. As the song is J.J. has to say, uh, our worship and our praise uh, is shifting the atmosphere. Every yoke is destroyed. Every knee, uh, you know, uh, everything is broken. His worship, our praise, is shifting the atmosphere. You have the power to shift your own atmosphere in the mighty name of Jesus. And that's all I want to say today. I've been up since about 5, 4 o'clock this morning. And I got to get up early in the morning and go to church. Uh, remember, if you're in the city of New Orleans, uh, 1616 Robert C. Blake's uh, Senior Drive, New Home Family Worship Center service starts at 7.30 in the morning, uptown, and they have a 10.30 service by Bishop uh, Samuel Blake's. You have New Home uh, Family Worship Center in New Orleans East location. Uh, you have an 8.30 service there. You have a 10, uh, 10, 30, 11 o'clock, but it's at 13800 Haynes Boulevard. They have a new home family worship center across the river. You have one in Hammond. You have one in Baton Rouge. You have one in, uh, in Houston, Texas. Um, it's Googling. Uh, and, and sisters, if you're on here, if you have not registered for the swim conference, go on rcblakes.com uh, and uh, register. And I just thank God for you all, for you all who have joined in with me so late. I thought everybody would be asleep, but obviously nobody not. So I thank God for you all in the name of Jesus. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord God, I thank you for this time, this opportunity for everybody who has joined in with me today. Father God, as the word has went forth, uh, the shift in the atmosphere, our worship and our praise, Lord God, that we have the power to speak prophetically into our lives because this is truly the day that you have made let's let us rejoice 
as always, and be glad in it. Father God, thank you for deliverance. Thank you for healing. Father God, thank you for our children in their right mind, state of mind, in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every last one of our households in Jesus' name, Lord God. Now, Father God, we know that you are able to do more exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ever ask or, or imagine. As your word says, as long as we del delighted ourselves in you, you will give us the desires of our hearts. So, Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We extol your wonderful name in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. My name is Ramon Cota. I thank God for you all. Remember, tell somebody about a living Jesus Christ that is real. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all have a wonderful night. Amen.